If you've ever eaten food off the gra gra ground, this video is for you. Hello internet, I'm Will Fulton, and this is Gut Busted. For the past few weeks, we've been debunking some of the most prevalent myths about food and drink for your viewing pleasure. And now, we're tackling a vaguely scientific food law you've probably heard since you were a toddler, the five second rule. If you drop a piece of food on the ground and it stays on the ground for less than five seconds, it's good to eat, right? No way, we are not eating that. Disgust, it's fine, it passed the five second rule. It's a great punchline for cheesy sitcoms, sure, and apparently something a lot of people consider to be a basic tenet of germ dogma. Admittedly, I could see this making sense, but again, I'm not an expert, I just play one on the internet. Let's bring in someone who might actually know what they're talking about to explain the science behind the five second rule, or the lack of science behind. Hey, I'm Natalia. I'm your super gross seeker science correspondent, and I love eating food that's fallen on the floor. Contrary to popular belief, bacteria does not grant you a five second grace period before it comes to contaminate your tasty morsels. Yeah, bacteria is mean, man. A study published in 2016 looked specifically at whether the five second rule had any scientific veracity. A team of researchers at Rutgers University dropped different types of food ranging from wet slices of watermelon, to dry bread, to bread with butter, to gummy candy. They also used different services to see what your food falls on if it matters when it comes to gathering those germs, including stainless steel, glazed ceramic tile, carpet, ew, and a hardwood floor. Then they added a tasty bacterium to the surface and bombs away. They dropped the different foods from about five inches and left the food on each surface less than one second, five seconds, 30 seconds, and 300 seconds. Mmm, delicious. Okay, that makes sense. So the circumstances of your environment matter a lot more than timing. Like for instance, a tasteful shag carpet would be much worse than a tile floor. What they found was that the surface and type of food dropped mattered just as much as the time the food was on the floor. <laughs> The wet watermelon gathered the most bacteria, and the gummy gathered the least amount. And the smooth, non-porous floors, steel and ceramic tile, transferred the most amount of bacteria versus the carpet, which was the least offending surface. So the moral of the story, don't eat wet watermelon dropped on bacteria-laden stainless steel floor, guys! Unless you have a death wish. Or you're a weirdo like me. So is any floor safe to eat off of? I mean, like, I really swiffer mine. Sometimes will. You have to take risks in life. Oops. <sighs> Tastes delicious. A little like salmonella, but mostly delicious. Rules were meant to be broken. Look, germs are everywhere and pretty unavoidable. And research shows that children who are introduced to dirt and germs early on stand to develop a strong immune system. This is partly because vaccines, they work. Get your flu shot. So if I drop my food on the floor, like let's say it's a really nice hunk of beluga caviar, I should just leave it there and maybe order seamless instead? Uh, what kind of surface did you drop it on? Yeah, no, uh, order that seamless stat. And while you're at it, get me some. So there you have it, the five second rule, while seemingly convenient, is pretty much irrelevant. Eat off the floor at your own risk, or just don't eat off the floor at all, or exclusively eat off the floor, maybe boost your immune system in the process. Uh, look, I really don't care, I'm not the cops. <laughs> For more amazing daily hit videos, make sure to subscribe to our channel, obviously. And for more great food content, check out the link in our description. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna finish this floor apple. <laughs>